What would you do if the sky started raining ash? Could we survive a volcanic winter? What could cause strange sounds over a lake? Today, we test the believability of the massive Yellowstone supervolcano eruption. Welcome to Believing the Bazaar, where we dive into the unknown and the unusual and tell you whether or not we find it believable. That is right. And today we are talking volcanoes. Volcanoes. For like the five of you that are probably listening in Wyoming, this might hit a little differently. Or Montana or Idaho or any state. Anywhere. Yeah, that way. Yeah. Okay, let me just be up front. This is a little bit of an unusual one. And trust me, I know that. I knew that when I started it. I knew that when I started researching it. And every day up until today, there was almost like this guilt where I was like, this isn't, this isn't what we talk about. This isn't typical. This is, does this fit what, does this fit what Believing the Bazaar does? And you know what? I don't care. We can make the rules, Tyler. This is our show. It's true. It's true. So yes, is it's, uh, it's different, but I think the through line for me, and the only reason I want to talk about this, like I'm not talking about like a, and these tsunamis are scary too. Uh, anyways, this is scary to me. Like in the same way that it's like, what if a huge asteroid hit yeah, Earth? Yeah. It, like, yeah. Is it paranormal? No. Am I very, very, very thankful that I was able to find some weird, unusual things and tie it in later in this episode? Yes. It was like a stamp of approval. It was a major justification for me. Yeah. But the same way that like an asteroid could hit Earth, it's not paranormal, but it could happen, is scary. It's like, okay, there's this super volcano right here in the United States. That could go off. It has gone off and it could be really, really bad for millions of people. Yeah. And that's scary. A lot of people. Yeah. Maybe not us as much in Ohio, but yeah, we still not great. Relatively safe here. Yeah. Relatively. We would be, a, we, there would be consequences. We would feel yeah. the effects. I didn't do anything. What are the consequences for me? Because you live here. Oh, I see. Wrong place, wrong time. Like Pompeii. Yes. Um, but that said, I just wanted to preface that a little bit because y'all might be like, huh? Uh, believable. <laughs> I know, I know, but I still think it's worth talking about. It's something I think everybody who, who, anybody who's used YouTube for, you know, periods of their life, I feel like you've gone down a rabbit hole where you've somehow ended up on a, an apocalyptic video. I don't know if you have, I've had like the volcano. I've had like huge, like the polar shifting, Yeah, which isn't There's apocalyptic. There's a science like, channel that I really liked a lot, but they were always... I, I found them getting more negative. Yeah. And I was like, I gotta stop watching these. They just started hating their job. They're just like, let's <laughs> just destroy the world. But it's scary. It's spooky. But that said, and just because we, I feel like we always have to talk about it around this time, we're still in our original recording space and it is hot. It's hot. April, but it's hot. hot. It is 80 degrees hot. Warm up here. The oven's on. Pretty yeah. heating for us. All right. So before we move on to discussing Yellowstone explicitly, let's look at what a super volcano is. All right, and just to list off the top, we got my sources, Vox.com, Science Focus, USGS.gov, Columbia, Tribune, Express.co.uk. UK? Yes, UK. Okay. Yeah. So what is a supervolcano? Because oh, that's what we're talking about here. Can I ask a question? Yeah, you may. You can ask a question anytime. Will this I have the answer? Maybe not. Linguistically. Yeah. Does volcano come from the god Vulcan? I did not look that up. I okay. promise you I didn't look I that up. I think it does. Do you want to look it up? I'll pause it right now. Yeah, let me look it up. All right. Good news, it does come from that. There's bad news? Um, No. Okay, just good news. Just good news. That's the best news. It comes from the god Vulcan. You're welcome to look up any other things like that you want during this episode because you're not going to find it on this <laughs> on, on this side. Over All here. right. Um, so what is a super volcano? It's basically a volcano that at one point had an eruption with a volcanic explosivity index of eight, which is that down the bit? largest recorded value on index. So basically, it's like the Richter scale. Okay. We talked about in the quiz that we did on Patreon. So it's like when they're like, it's a nine on the Richter scale. The higher the index, the the badder it is, the worse and it is. eight is the highest? Eight is the highest you can go. Basically, mm. if you score an eight, what it means is that 
the volume of deposits. So basically what this volcano is shooting out, debris, you know, uh, ash, all that stuff, is greater than 1,000 cubic kilometers, which for people in the United States, 240 cubic miles. Wow. Yeah. So if it can shoot out ash 240 cubic miles, it's listed as a super volcano and it gets to wear a cape. Are there any others? Yeah. Oh, there's 20, I believe. I don't have them all listed out, but there's 20. 20 super volcanoes? Yeah. The last one that erupted, this is kind of jumping ahead, but I don't think it's in my notes. It's just something I remember hearing when I was researching is it's kind of like the world seems to be due for a super volcano eruption about every 100,000 years. Oh. The last one that erupted was in New Zealand about 25,000 years ago. Okay. So we like... still got about 75,000 years. About, okay. but you know, but there's, you know, it's give or take there. Some people are looking at signs with Yellowstone and they're a little bit concerned. I'm not, we we'll should get... throw some people in there to sacrifice ice, maybe. Let's just throw some ice oh. in there, cool it off. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> ice it. Turn uh, that uh, hot toddy into a Mai Tai, you know? Yeah. And and just to like, okay, so that's it's shooting up that much deposit, that many miles. Like, what does that mean? So just to put this in perspective, there was a video I was watching, and it said that a super volcano that shoots up that much stuff, ash, stuff. debris, lava, blah, 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 blah. Gunk. Gunk. It would be enough to bury the entire state of Texas in one and a half meters of ash and debris. So like, like off the ground, one and a half meters the entire state of Texas. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like one and a half meters. Are you? I don't. Meters will never. We're not that many meters at all. Listen, when I was growing up, and I liked Star Wars, and I still like Star Wars now, but I liked it more then. Yeah. And I like you get a toy, right? Like you'd get like yeah. Kiati Mundi, yeah. you'd get Qui Gon, you'd get <laughs> Adagalia, and it'd be like on the back of it, you know, like her lightsaber is this color because, and it would give you their stats, and it'd be yeah. like yeah, how yeah, tall yeah. they are. They'd be like. Keati Mundi is 1.4 meters high. And I would just be like, so is he like Michael Jordan? <laughs> is he like Kevin Hart? Kevin Hart wasn't around then. But like, I don't know what that means. Six six feet. So taller than us. So we're not a meter. We're not a, we're not a, um. Let me, let me, six feet, six feet is 1.82 meters. Oh, so we're over a meter. Yeah, we're over a meter, but barely. Okay, so. So we are like one, so it's like us, like our yeah, height. It's about us. And I was in Texas. It's pretty big. A lot of windmills. <laughs> yeah. Where I was at. So how does this come to be? How does this come to happen? It occurs when the magma, this is where I get very earth science on you and I'll keep it brief. Okay. All right. It occurs when the magma and the mantle rises up to the crust of the earth, but it can't break through. It's like pushing, it's pushing. And the crust is like, keep it down, down there. Yeah. It's more like that, 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 um. That moment in Clue, the movie where they're like, let us in, let us in, let, let us, us out, out, let, let us, us out. out. Yeah. It's like that. It's like a pimple. Yeah, exactly. That's good. It's like Dr. Pimple Popper. <laughs> um, the pressure continues building and building until the magma pool grows until the Earth's crust just can't take it any longer. And the pressure happens and it bursts. And it's labeled a super eruption. And the bursting occurs at hot spots, one of which is at, of course, as you can guess by the name of this episode, Yellowstone. So here's a question for you. Yeah. Let's pretend Hollow Earth is real for a second. Something okay. we haven't touched on. It's been on our radar for, give or take, three years. Yeah. If Hollow Earth was real, do you think that these people would be worse off or better off if it erupted? The people inside the Earth? See, I don't know. Yeah, it's like, is there magma down there? Or are they like, are we experiencing volcanic winter while they're just like having a tea party down in the Hollow Yeah, I think they're having a good old time. Okay. I don't know. Because in Hollow Earth, I think there's like a sun and it's like a whole other universe in there we have not touched on oh this. i see that's way more than i know yeah i've seen like journey to the center of the earth with like dinosaurs and yeah, stuff I think we got t-rexes down there as far as i know i thought it was more like tunnel system where they're like bad I think stuff it's like happens. another universe kind oh, of or like geez. another planet maybe i can catch a night sky down there anyway eruptions from super volcanoes can have long-lasting climate change consequences as huge areas get covered with ash and can threaten species Extinction's a possibility. Not really, honestly, not really with us. People? Life finds a way. No, it will be fine. And I said it, the last one was in New Zealand, happened about 26,500 years ago, give or take. Oh, you said life finds a way? I did. One of my favorite Easter eggs from that movie is when they're in the chopper, Goldblum, he has Ian two, Malcolm. He has two female buckles. Buckles, yeah. Buckles, yeah. Like all the dinosaurs on the island are all female. Oh, I see. And what he does is he ties not, it together. He finds a way. That's cool. Yeah. That's that really cool. I like that. Yeah. 
that's something as a filmmaker, I wonder if you're like, <laughs> or you're like, that's really cool. And many people aren't going to get that. It's Spielberg, right? Yeah. I'm sure he was like, <laughs> they'll find out. They'll talk about me later. <laughs> so what is Yellowstone and has it ever erupted? Okay. So this might be a little obvious to us, but we also have to reel back and remember that not everybody listening to this podcast or this episode is from the United States. It's true. So there, there definitely could be some people out there that's like, I think I've heard of Yellowstone. Like, is it that one geyser? Like, what is that place? So mm. I, I, let me give a little bit of a, a breakdown of that. Okay. Okay. So beyond being a super volcano, Yellowstone is a national park in the Western USA. It's mostly in the state of Wyoming. It also extends to Montana and Idaho. It's believed to be the first national park in the world. It's huge. Let alone the United States. You've been there. I've driven through it with my father. It was gorgeous. You throw some ice out the window just to cool it. It's like you're offering. <laughs> it's like, let me pass this street. We did go over a really big bridge. It was very pretty. Did you look down and there's just magma? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. The, it was starting to erupt already. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. And you are right. It's big. It's apparently about almost 3,500 square miles. People camp there. Yeah. It's a national park. You can camp. And I believe any national park or national forest, you can just park wherever you want. And camp. Pretty, that's pretty wild. I would love to do that. Like, I, like, as much as I love Airbnbs and camping, glamping, I would love to just like go to a national forest, be like, this is my spot. Put oh. together the tent and just camp. Maybe when you're older with Joey, you can do that. <laughs> maybe when I'm, I thought you were just going to say maybe when I'm older. <laughs> maybe when you're grown, Tyler. It's full of woodlands, grasslands, mountain ranges, lakes, rivers, canyons. It's known for its wildlife, obviously the super volcano, the, the volcano caldera, hot springs, Yellowstone Lake. Hiking, beautiful scenery, and probably one of the most popular attractions is Old Faithful, which is a very consistent geyser. Yeah. Shoots up. It's water, hot water. It goes spicy psh. water. But what you might not know is under Yellowstone Caldera, which is, Caldera is like the cave in part. It's like after it explodes, uh -huh. it's like what's left. So it's like a crater almost, but okay. it's still a volcano. Oh, like Mount St. Helens. It's got that big crater on yeah. top. I, I hiked a volcano. It was very really cool. I saw a picture of it. From afar, I'm like, geez, that's up there. Scary. Very scary. It wasn't active, though, if my, was No. If my wife takes one wrong step, bad <laughs> Eugene. She's carrying my son. But what you, might, what you might not know is underneath that caldera is a single chamber, single chamber, that is 37 miles long. It is 18 miles wide, and it's about five miles deep. And it's all full of molten lava. Okay. All which right. Which is absurd. Can I say something really quick? Yeah. Can't they just, like... Ice, right? Drill it out. Let it seep out other Kinda, places. Yeah. Couldn't they do that? Like, had no one thought of that? I think we should get together and like everybody that has, okay, if the entire world goes to their freezer and everybody's <laughs> got an ice cube tray that's gross. Yeah. It's yeah. got like cat fur in it. Some and broccoli. Dust. It's, I don't even know where it came from. It's gross. Yeah, yeah. You don't eat broccoli. You don't know why it's in there. I think if everybody in the world all brought that one disgusting cube, ice tray cube thing. Yeah, wouldn't it? And we all dumped it in at the same time. I think the world could come together and just chill. And we'd have to do it nineteen more times. But well, that would bring people together. It would. It Nothing be a, brings uh, people yeah. together like apocalyptic disasters and ice. That trays. is terrifyingly big. How many football fields is that? A lot. <laughs> a lot of football fields. So to answer the other question, has Yellowstone ever erupted? Yes. There's been eruptions two million years ago. I think it's 2.1, but I think that's a rounding error when you get to... Billions? To mil no, million. 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and then 640,000 years ago. The one from 640,000 years ago is cited to be the eruption that created the Yellowstone caldera that we know today. And that's the one that had the eruption of the 1,000 cubic kilometers. Well, it's actually, they listed it as 2,500 cubic kilometers. Which is crazy. That's insane. Like, I can't even... It earned its it. badge. Like, okay, you're yeah. a super volcano. We yeah. got you. Maybe, um, maybe calm down a little bit. Yeah. So, there, like I said, there's that kind of 100,000 year span thing, but some people think it's due. I don't know. Mm. But what we're going to talk about now is the spooky spooks. We're going to talk about what would happen if, let's just say, tomorrow, if this super volcano erupted. So let me start off by saying uh, that many experts believe it wouldn't be a wall of death like the Pompeii. Okay. And a lot of people don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. Um, but others aren't so sure. 
But that doesn't mean that there wouldn't be long-lasting consequences regardless, and it would obviously be a death sentence to those that refuse to leave the area. It's kind of, it's, it's not like this at all, but it just makes you think of people like living in Tornado Alley. Well, it reminds me of when Katrina happened, like people refused to leave. Yeah, and I like I don't pass judgment because I've never been in the situation. Right? No, we can't really. But... I'm a very sentimental person. Like I, I've, like I like I, I like immediately once I like an inanimate object, it becomes it has this like hold over me. <laughs> you give it a name and a backstory. It's bad. It's bad. So it's like in when it doesn't pertain to me, I'm like, why don't you just leave? Like just go on get. Yeah. But then if it happened here, you know, if they're like, hey, this thing might happen in Northeast Ohio, maybe you should go. Like a train crash, and I'd be like, <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. It's fine. But my stuff is here. But all my things. Yeah. My cat. So assuming it was a full-on super eruption, here's what we could expect beyond the precursor events such as changing terrain and earthquakes. The pool of magma underneath Yellowstone, it would take days or even weeks to empty. So it would be like, it wouldn't just be like a one-time like yeah, thing. It would be, be like be ongoing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It would be ongoing. The power of the explosion would be so intense that it would likely shoot huge amounts of ash into the stratosphere. Ooh. And that means the ash will accumulate within a hundred, within a couple hundreds of miles around Yellowstone. It was reported actually that the last eruption 640,000 years ago, people found ash all the way on the East coast of the United States. So it, it travels. Yeah. Well, it goes in the atmosphere, right? And then it rains back down. Yeah. It's, and it blocks, we'll get to there. So there would be implications for the East coast of the United States, obviously, being in danger to a certain degree. Yeah. But the surrounding states of Yellowstone would obviously get the worst. Yeah. Ash and stuff. They would experience pyroclastic flows, which are incredibly fast moving flows that contain a high density mix of hot lava blocks, ash, and volcanic gas. Typically consists of two different parts. The lower section is like the flow of like the rough fragments across the ground, where the higher level of the flow is like this cloud of ash. Pretty much destroys everything in its path. And I know everybody thinks it's just like, it's just lava. Um, but the ash is no joke. Like and, and we talked about in the quiz, the ash yeah. is like the real, real, real dangerous part because it's not like if you burn something, like if you have a little fire and you see like an ash come up and it just like fizzles out. Yeah. Like apparently it's like really, it's like shards of glass. Like this ash is sharp and really dangerous. If you breathe it in, it could like cut up your lungs. Cause it's, it's almost like little obsidian. Like yeah, obsidian. It's like little, little rock. It's just not yeah. good. So that would mean that people and animals would be exposed for long periods of time. Like, if you're exposed, like, you're at risk. Yeah. It can contaminate water. And beyond that, it would permanently damage engines of cars and planes, vehicles that attempted to operate once Not the ash has engines. been ejected. Well, you can't leave at that point. You can't That's at true. the last minute be like, you know what? Maybe I should have left. Maybe those all those earthquakes and those people saying to leave, and then you try to get in your car, and the car's like, nah, I'm a Kia. <laughs> no, even a Kia. Or even a even a good car, even yeah. a Toyota or a Honda. When what about a Tesla? It doesn't have an engine. That's a good point. I don't know. We'll have to ask Elon. We'll tweet at him. Yeah. Somebody clip this audio and tweet at him and he see. He won't answer. He'll block you. If the ash reaches the stratosphere as anticipated, it could stay suspended for years, which would create health hazards, block the sun, and lead to lower temperatures than we're used to, which is a volcanic winter. So not quite extinction level status. Like this isn't like asteroid and the dinosaurs. Yeah. But life-altering, for sure. Yeah, pretty not chill. It'd be bad for wildlife. Animals would die. Plants, like farmers, like, it, oh, you know, yeah. slight changes in the temperature like that. And plus the ash would kill vegetation. So mm -hmm. when you think about, like, okay, I survived. I'm okay. But what about your water sources? What about your food sources? Like, it's erupted before we can get through this. But it's, you know, it would be life-changing, for yeah. sure, for us, yeah. you know? I think a lot of people would move from the middle of the country to the coasts, you know how the cost of living in Ohio become California. Skyrocket, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to well, hold on to this house. that lake, right? Oh, which lake? Our lake. Oh, Lake Erie. Yeah. That lake. That, 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 that little lake. one. It'd be like the only like, well, no, an ash would get there. I don't know. Save all the water. We'd be like fill up, after you dump the ice cubes in, fill up your tray one time and then just suck on, suckle on the cubes for a couple hours a day. That'll get you through. That'll get you through. So just to recap, we got lava flow, ash for nearby areas, ash in the stratosphere, which could impact energy from the sun and cause colder temperatures, suboptimal conditions for plants and kill animals. And again, up to this point, we haven't really touched anything paranormal. No. Um, but honestly, like I said at the top, I find this scary because it could happen. Yeah. And like none of us have experienced this. No, no. And hopefully we never do. Knock on. It's that unknown 
that is a known, but you don't know when it's going to happen. It's kind of like when they're like, yeah, one day, like you're in, you're in fourth grade, you know, you have a little plum in your, your, your book bag for lunch and you're, you're writing notes back and forth to some, somebody in class and your, your science teacher is like, one day the sun's going to explode, <laughs> but you probably won't be here for it. And you're just like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> W-U-T what? No, like eventually an asteroid probably will hit Earth and eventually yeah. the sun will explode. It's like those are... Inevitables. Yeah, and it's easier to not think about it. Or beyond that, be like, well, it's not going to happen during my lifetime. Probably not. But it's still like, it's scary. Yeah, it is scary. Because one day, one day we're going to run out of luck as a species and a planet. I know, and that's why we just need to find another planet out there that'll take us. We need an invite. We need that e invite. <laughs> Fly on over. Come yes. on over. I think this is pro- this whole episode is probably brought to you by Don't Look Up because I watched that when you were gone and I feel like that just injected a whole natural disaster mindset in my head. I see. I yeah, see. So as of this point, I want to get into the signs next of like what, what, what we'll see that will lead us to an eruption. You brought plums to school? Yeah. I, when I was in first grade, I lost my first tooth in a plum. I <gasps> bit into it. I looked down. There was a tooth in my plum. Interesting. Sorry. So what are your thoughts up to this point? Well, one thought was that you brought plums to school. And it's well, really... okay. I was in first grade. I didn't. My mom put plums in it's my not, it's lunchbox. It's not bad. It's not a bad thing. You don't like plums? I, I do now. I do what about now. apricots? I Love apricots. Peaches. They're too messy, though. But I like a peach. I need a paper towel. This whole thing is terrifying to me. Um, it's a terrifying concept. I try not to think about this on the daily, actually, because you're right. It will one day happen. No matter what happens, it will. When we get to the end, I sometimes I like to prime you for discussion questions. At the very end, I want to know what your most terrifying apocalyptic uh, scenario is. Okay. So dwell on it, but also pay attention to me. Mm, okay. So what are the signs going to be? How are we going to know? Is it just Are we just blindly hoping it doesn't happen? Or do we have scientists that are studying Yellowstone? It's, right now, it's 2023. I feel like we have scientists we somewhere. We do, yeah. And there will absolutely be signs. Um, that's not really part of the problem. The problem is interpreting the signs. So, for instance, I think it's fair to say that we live in a world of a lot of misinformation, right? <laughs> yes. No matter what side you're on, you know, spiritually, politically, religiously, what part of the world you're on. I Financially. Think anybody at any time can post something. I actually just saw a TikTok today. And it was like, I'm going to tell you five ways to get fit. He went through all five. And at the end of it, he was like, if you listen to anything I just said, that's what's wrong with the world. There's so much information. Don't listen to any of that. It won't do anything, but subscribe to my channel for real information. I was what, just like, what, 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 I was starting to screenshot things. <laughs> I'm just like, damn. What a pump fake. That's crazy. I, know, I was like, jeez. But anyway, all that to say, I've seen numerous articles. I think an eruption is looming. And I think this could be, I don't want to say clickbait because it could be. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not the one out in the field doing this. I'm yeah. just, I'm doing the same thing. I'm taking articles, curating these notes. But anyway, some people think that they've seen a lot of wildlife inexplicably rushing away from the area. They've seen an increase in earthquakes. Some people have seen paranormal activity around Yellowstone recently. So uh, people interpret that as like, I think things are ramping up. Where others are like, no. Some people are like, you're going to see the ground start rising, for instance. Apparently, Mount uh, St. Helens started bulging and it grew about five feet per day before it erupted. Wow. So there's How many feet in total do you know? I don't know how many days that was happening. I have no idea. Um, But experts believe that the entire Yellowstone caldera... Um, would be lifted about 10 feet higher than it is now, like just from the pressure Mm -hmm. building up. And they also say the earthquakes would become way more common. And at first, there would be short spikes. So it'd be like earthquake and then fade, earthquake and then fade. And then as the eruption loomed closer, the vibrations of these swarming earthquakes would last longer and there'd be a continuous vibration. And they say that the final warning sign would be like a harmonic tremor, which is this sound. It sounds like a large organ pipe caused by the vibration. The earth's going to sing? Yeah, it's going to be like... That's great. That's it's wild. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is that these signs would give people enough time to get away if yeah. they listen. So if you stuck with us so far, thank you. I appreciate you. I've, I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you're terrified by it just as much as I am. You should be. You really should be. But now let's get to the stuff... On why you actually probably listen to the podcast. Let's get to the paranormal. We are on to the spooky spooks of Yellowstone. This is this is what you came here for. Yeah, I imagine so. We haven't melted yet. Uh, it's toasty. I'm on the border. It's 70 degrees outside and starry, but it is hot up here now. It is. So on to the unusual. I got some weird phenomena for you, and I got some UFO stuff. 
I didn't know about any of this. I, I kind of knew a little bit about UFO stuff prior to researching, but not to the same degree. But I did not know about this next thing that I'm going to talk about until I like, it was that guilt. It was like, all right, I can't just talk about this thing potentially exploding, what's going to happen, and then calling it a day. Like, I got to see if there's, I mean, it's a huge area. There's got to be some weird stuff going on Definitely. over there. Definitely. And there's there's probably some stuff I'm not even going to touch on. So there's always room for more Yellowstone discussion. I know you don't get talked about a lot, Wyoming. So maybe we'll, maybe we'll circle back. But one thing I did find that I want to talk about is the mysterious whispers and sounds of Yellowstone Lake. Okay. So it's been reported for centuries, dating back to like the natives that live there, that strange noises seem to be coming from the air around Yellowstone Lake. I feel like it was very air. Air, air, air. air, air. And the interesting thing about it is a lot of people hear different things. It's not like if you hear this chiming sound or you hear this, you you know, that that's the experience. It's a lot of people thinking that they're hearing different things. So some claim it's like hushed whispers, while others people think it's like a musical humming or like a whining. Some say it sounds like metal cables crashing together. There's uh, the idea of organ music, the sounds of harps or swarming bees. Needless to say, it's very strange, strange types of sounds, sounds you wouldn't expect, but also like inexplicably coming over a lake. Yeah. Like it's just... You're there, there's this lake, and then you just kind of get hit by this rush of sound. It's often that they're heard on windless days, commonly in the winter, and the sensation can last continuously up to about 30 seconds. Mm. It usually builds both in volume and intensity to the point that some people claim it's like deafening. Wow. And then all of a sudden, just boom, on the drop of a dime, it just stops. I've never heard of this before. There's like no fading away. You heard about it a little bit ago, like an hour ago. (laughs) Yes. So it's just like 30, like you hear something, it's building, it's building, it's getting louder, it's getting louder, it's getting really, really, really loud, and then it's boom, done, quiet. Are there explanations for it? Just a lake. There's some theories. But what I think makes it very unique is that that means it's not just some random sound off in the distance, right? Like it's not like... You hear something faintly and then you like focus in and you like, you know, cup your ear and you're like, wait, what am I hearing? What is that sound? Is that a, is that a plane? Is somebody playing music on the other side of the, like, what am I? It's just like, it gets loud. It grows. And another eerie detail is that the sounds reported almost be moving across the lake. Like, it's not like in one corner that you detect it and then it gets louder. Like it travels across the sky over the lake and sometimes rapidly and can change directions. So the first written record of these strange noises was made in 1872. It was during an expedition which was tasked with surveying the park's region because this was the year that the park was established. So basically it's like, let's figure out where this park is, what's here, let's establish it, let's figure out what's what so we can claim it. So here's a quote from one of the men that was part of the expedition, F.H. Bradley. He said, quote, while getting breakfast, we heard every few moments a curious sound between a whistle and a horse whine whose locality and character we could not at first determine. In 1892, a biology professor named Edwin Lytton wrote, It seemed to begin at a distance and grow louder overhead where it filled the upper air and suggested a medley of wind in the tops of pine trees and in telegraph wires. The echoes of bells after being repeated several times, the humming of swarming bees, and two or three other less definite sources of sound. It appeared to be rather indefinite, reverberating sound characterized by a slight metallic resonance. He's fancy. That's professor there. Yeah. The reports continued into the 20th century when geologist and chief naturalist of the park, Clyde Max Bauer, also wrote of the noises in 1924. It's not a real name. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, He heard on several occasions, and he described it sounding like the hum of bees, which would rise slowly from the distance, pass overhead, and then fade rapidly off into the horizon. A friend of ours and photographer, Jack Haynes, also had experience with the noises and said it was unlike anything he's ever heard before. And they were both so enthralled by its haunting, ethereal quality that they deemed it the music of the lake. Oh my. Very poetic. Yeah, it's. I feel like you just get so overtaken by it and you're like, I want to write poetry. Yeah. This ethereal the quality. The music of the lake. So, I did find a Reddit story Of somebody claiming to experience something similar to this. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's from Reddit, so you know it's believable. Quote, So about two years ago, I was in Yellowstone with my parents and my younger sister. We started the trip with all the touristy stuff, like Old Faithful. But we wanted to explore the wilderness more and found this hike 
to Artist Point, which is supposed to overlook this beautiful waterfall and the Yellowstone Grand Canyon, a few miles or so north of Yellowstone Lake. This isn't a typical paved path for hundreds of tourists to use all day every day. It had a faint dirt path. In some places, there was no path at all. Before beginning the hike, we were warned by park rangers to be wary of roaming bison and bears. Bison surrounded us. It was beautiful and also kind of slightly scary. If you get too close to a bison, they could actually maul you. But eventually, we got to this clearing, a ways off from a stream, and the path crossed over. Suddenly, we all heard a large, overbearing sound. But each of the four of us heard something different. Instinctively, I thought it was a car engine turning on. My dad thought it was a chainsaw, as if someone was cutting down trees nearby. My mom thought it was a grumbling, or like an animal growling, like a bear. My sister thought it was a stampede of animals, and the noise was just thousands of footsteps. The noise was so distinct to me, it shocked me how differently everyone else heard the noise. Then I realized, I must have been wrong too. There's no way any cars could get out here, on the mountainside with random geysers and roaming animals all around the thick brush. The only thing we could all agree on, amidst all the arguing and honestly how unsettling it was, that we needed to hightail it out of there. We never finished the hike, although I think we were close to the end. It has been two years, but the sound still sticks with me. Recently, I did my own research about Yellowstone Lake, quote, whispers, which have numerous encounters that sound similar to ours. However, once again, we were miles from the lake. Is this another counter of the lake whisper phenomenon, or was it something else? Unquote. I think you confused bison with bear. Bison and bear? Yeah. He's like, bison can maul you. I think bears can maul you. I, I think they could tag team you. Yeah. Do some WWE action. Yeah. I wouldn't want to fight either one, personally. I wouldn't either. No, that's, that's rough rough and tumble right it's there. It's pretty weird. The, he said he's heard a car... The dad heard a chainsaw, the, do- the the sister heard a stampede, and the mom heard like a low kind of growl. Yeah. Those are all really similar sounds, I think. I If somebody if somebody started a chainsaw and somebody started a car, you don't think you'd be able to tell the difference? No. Really? Not without seeing it, no. What about, I don't think what so. about an animal growl versus a car turning on? Depends on the volume. Yeah. You know? I think to a certain degree, there's similarities, but... It's weird how not two of them were like, this is, you know, there was no agree- agreement. That is weird. That is really strange. Yeah, it's just, it's very unusual. So here's some theories about what, what people think it is. So in the most unusual paranormal side, there's people that believe it could be produced by lost souls. Lost of souls? Drowned victims or relentless spirits of the long dead Native Americans of the area. I'm going to make this guy think of a car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like what? A meteorologist in 1930 claimed that maybe it was just sounds emanating from air above the lake. So basically he said the warm air sitting above the cool air of the lake surface creates this like sound mirage. So basically what it does is if there's a sound happening in the distance, yeah, because of the air over the lake, it like amplifies but then distorts the sound. So what uh, you're hearing is an amplified, distorted effect of something in the distance, which could be like a geyser, okay, something, some construction thing, and you're just catching the, the back end of it, and it's like been distorted, almost like f- natural feedback. Yeah, or kind of like no, this is nothing like it at all. I mean, when we I, used to go to cemeteries and listen back to our EVPs, and you heard like cars in the distance, yeah. and it was like the most harrowing, like you'd be like, what the, what was it? it oh, it's just a car. Yeah, it was just Route seventy seven. So I think, you know, like this distortion of sound definitely, it could lend itself to that, but I don't know. I don't know. If they're all different though, like it almost doesn't make sense. Now, over time, if they're different, it does make sense to me because they'd be different sounds being distorted. Yeah. But you mean like people in the same moment hearing yes, different things. the same moment. Yeah. yeah. Although you did just say they sound kind of similar. They do. They do. So let's move on to UFOs. Of course. Yeah, I got a video for the first one, and I'm going to show Charlie now. There's actually quite a few videos. Some of them were eh. It was kind of like when uh, when we did the airline UFOs. Like, I found some videos, and some of them were like, I can't wait to post this on social media. And some of them were like, wow, that's fake. Or just like, <laughs> it's just not enough, right? Like, it yeah. just doesn't, if, it, if it doesn't get me amped up, I'm not going to share it. But I did find one that I think is very interesting. I'm going to show Charlie now, and I'm going to make it my goal to get it posted Tuesday or Wednesday on social media so everyone else can react to it. So this is from 2017, so recently. 
Okay. And uh, it is a potential UFO flying over Yellowstone. So are you ready to check it out? Yeah. All right. I just showed Charlie the video. Charlie, what are your thoughts? What do you think about that video? Could be an orb space spaceship alien thing. Mm -hmm. Could be ball lightning. Yeah. When you, I didn't think about that, but then once you said it, but it, I've never seen a good video ball lightning, and, I it, and now it makes me want to look it up because it felt so compact. Yeah, I don't know. I've never seen it. I I know of it as a phenomenon, but I've never I've never seen ball I lightning. I think it looks kind of like that. <laughs> I think maybe I have seen a video <laughs> now that you mention it. But it's weird, and there's definitely something there. Do you, yeah. Is there any chance it could be a plane? No, not no. a plane. No way. A you drone. Tic tac. Tic tac. Tic tac. No, the tic tac spaceship. Oh, that's what it looked more like a ball to me, right? Well, in that speed, a shiny ball, or it was just like uh, the glow of it, maybe. Like, is it? Yeah, maybe the glow is throwing off the shape. It's possible. All right, let's move on to a UFO sighting from 2002. Okay. Quote: I think it was 2002 because it happened between the time I was forced out of med school and I took a job as a janitor at Yellowstone. Things have changed. <laughs> Medical school to janitor Yellowstone, and you know what? I don't think janitor Yellowstone is much worse no. financially, probably, but in terms of just being able to hang out at Yellowstone all day. Yeah. They said, get out of here. Get out of here, Frankenstein. Yeah. And take your mop with you. Yeah. So for the location, it was a little hole in the wall village. I was at my parents' second home. Now, normally it's extremely cloudy there, but I was laying in bed and looking out the window and I saw a lone star in the sky, despite the overcast during the day. Now I'm looking at the star for at least an hour, maybe two hours. I should point out that the star was entirely stationary the entire time. There was no movement for the entire one to two hours. Then the star splits into stars, multiple stars, and they move in triangular formation, which they hold for about 15 minutes before all three of them shoot up vertically into the sky. I have no idea what I saw. But I figured I'd share because I've read a couple of stories here about people looking at what you think is a star and then having it just hightail out of there, unquote. That's really strange. I don't know if I've ever heard a story where where someone stared at a star for that long and then it shifted to something else. Like I feel like if it's like I went outside, I was throwing the garbage away, I looked up, I saw a star, and I was like, oh, cool. And then I threw my garbage away and I looked up and it split. Like, you know, in that split moment. But... Technically, for a star to be, well, for, for an alien spaceship to be pretending to be a star for two hours, that doesn't mean it's stationary for two hours. It's true. Because Earth is moving. Yeah. So it would have to perfectly match or just be so minimally it's just off. just orbiting. Yeah. But it, it would have to, like, move. Yeah, it'd have to be moving with us. Yeah. Like, it can't, I don't know, like... Maybe that's not as trippy as it sounds to me, but for it to mock stationary for that long and yeah. not so like, cause it like, I guess he's saying that there weren't, if maybe if there were more stars, maybe he didn't have a point of reference. So maybe it was moving, maybe, but he couldn't tell because there's no, nothing to re you know, reference it to. Mm -hmm. Maybe if it was like a super starry sky, he would notice that it was moving. Yeah. Like sometimes if you catch a satellite or something, you might be like, is it moving? Is that a plane? And then, and then there's another star and you start waiting you're like, okay, yeah, it's definitely moving. So maybe he didn't have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. What do you think? I maybe it's just orbiting, so it would be moving. You know. So how? But how would you explain what you think he saw? Uh, naturally. No, just in general. Like, what do you think? Like, it's a spaceship. As, a, but as a, as a story, have you ever heard of something like that? It doesn't sound unfamiliar, but I can't place it. You know what I mean? Like, I it feels like yeah, I've heard that phenomenon before, but yeah, I don't know where. Man, but for two hours? It's a long time. And then just shooting vertically straight up into the sky. That's crazy. To see that would be so crazy. Um, here's a Reddit comment. It's a short one. But it was, I don't know if it was a comment on one of these other ones, but um, this one's pretty short. Quote, I had a sighting a year ago northwest of Yellowstone. A dark triangle slowly moved across the sky while I was taking photography. I didn't even see it until I saw a preview image on my camera of three lights perfectly streaked through the sky. And I looked up to see this massive triangle, 200, maybe 300 feet up, moving over the reservoir in the canyon, within a minute passing over the mountains in the east, keeping a very steady path. I've been mystified since. I never believed in UFOs until I accidentally caught one 
while taking photos at night of my favorite state park that I visit often. I never see planes there, and there aren't any facilities with electricity at all. It definitely makes you wonder, unquote. That's really wild. That one's really good. I wonder if he has those pictures anywhere. <laughs> they probably miraculously disappeared. Yeah. As they tend to do. Mm-hmm. All right, I got one more Reddit. I got one more uh, Reddit UFO story from 2018 in Yellowstone. Quote, I got inspired to post about this because I replied to a comment about someone who described an eerily similar sighting. The last few summers, I worked at a resort close to Eastgate of Yellowstone. From what I've heard, Yellowstone might be a UFO hotspot. Maybe it's due to the insane geothermal activity boiling underneath one of the most breathtakingly unique landscapes probably in this world. There's just some sort of special energy coursing through the mountains and rivers. I worked right by the east gate, so it took about five minutes to get into the park from where I lived. Friends and I would regularly drive 25-ish miles into the park to Sylvan Pass, a long road that takes you up a few thousand feet of elevation hugging the right side of the canyon carved by the river and mountains. At the top, there's a parking lot. It's actually right across from a little shack-looking thing that houses a cannon, and they use it to control avalanches on the pass. We headed up to Stargaze one night, like many others. It's dark there. Really dark. Like, you need to drive with your bright sun in the middle of the road dark. A bit eerie, but at the same time, the darkness provides the beautiful sight of bright stars and the purplish Milky Way galaxy ripping across the whole overhead view. Interjection, I'm very jealous at this point. We're right on top of the highest point between the two mountains on the pass. So almost nothing is obstructing your view of the cosmos. That night, we later bundled in jackets and blankets and laid down on the asphalt. We looked up for a while, and we noticed something along the outer right edge of the Milky Way. It looked like a star, but was much brighter than any star in the sky. Although, unlike stars, this thing was moving around in all directions at varying speeds. The best way I can describe its movement is to relate it to like a honeybee. The way honeybees buzz around near flowers down sideways and landing for a little bit to move on to the next. If the thing in the sky was a honeybee, then the Milky Way was like the flower. This thing stayed near the Milky Way. It would eventually drift toward the right, but it never crossed over to the left. It would buzz around all erratically and quickly, then stop, slow down, and move in a defined vector only to stop again, then shoot off in the other direction and go back buzzing around. We had our cameras. My buddy actually had a pretty decent camera and was taking long exposure shots of the night sky. I tried to record on my iPhone 8, but that couldn't even make out the colors of the Milky Way. We tried to get it on camera after waiting for about 15 minutes, but I guess it just wasn't long enough or (laughs) the camera wasn't good enough to catch it. I've always been a skeptic and scientifically minded, but open to any possibility. So I always hoped to see something, but never truly believed until what I saw that night. We watched for probably 45 minutes total, and it never went away. It was just buzzing around, doing these little maneuvers, and then stopping and then repeating the cycle. This is the first time I've posted about my experience because I've been thinking about it a lot recently. I guess the question now begs, what or who are these things piloting this craft? Could they be evil? We'll never really know. Unquote. Okay. It's interesting that you saw them. I just wish it would have connected to another story. You know? What do you mean? Like, it didn't match any other encounters of aliens that we saw. None of them have been the same. No, I know. That's something I wish we had. Yeah, it's like we got a a star that doesn't move and then broke up into three. And then we have this very erratic one by the Milky Way. And then we have this low triangle dark shape one. Yeah. They're all different years, though. 2002. So one's like over 20 years ago. 2018. And then I don't know if the other I don't think the other one set a date. But yeah, those are the UFO experiences that we have for Yellowstone. Let's get to the discussion. So before we get to the discussion, we like to stop the episode and thank our newest patrons as of the recording of this podcast episode. We would like to thank Isabella K. I almost said a last name, but I don't like I don't like putting the last names out there. So but Isabella K. Okay. So Charlie, we do this every week. We like to let people know what type of content exists, what kind of bonus stuff we're doing on the side in the world of Patreon. Why don't you highlight something that you're excited about, something you want to let people know about that exists on our Patreon? Sure. So something I'd like to point out is that every Monday we put up a post 
and we ask a question and we get a bunch of responses and on our social media response, we like to take those responses, talk about what the question is, talk about what people said, put our own two cents in. It's a lot of fun. It's a place where you get to really like be yourselves and discuss these topics. Shout out producer Ben, who comes up with 99.7% of those topics and also presents them to us in that segment. So the, the topic I want to highlight, the Patreon segment, is one that I remember very vividly our very first time doing which was Google, it's Google Meet. We still call it Google Hangout, but technically it's Google Meet. So once a month in our dedicated tier, we literally just for an hour meet up with whoever wants to join this this Google Meet chat. It's face-to-face, it's audio, video. We see each other. First time we did it, shout out Alex. It was us and one person and me and Charlie like, what do we say? What do we do? <laughs> and there's always, and sometimes there's like, and this isn't bragging because it's, there's, it's, there's not worth bragging about, but sometimes there's more people than we expect. And then there's like that, that like uh, when you have to stand in front of the classroom and you're like, oh no, like, what do I do? What do I say? And, uh, but it's just really cool because through this segment, this monthly segment, there's people that Charlie and I have really come to know and become friends with and care about and and they know more about us and we know more about them and it's besides our discord which it was completely free to anybody it's not a patreon thing but beyond discord i think this is one of our our biggest segments in terms of growing community which is really really cool it makes me really look forward to that hour every month and uh, if you're part of our dedicated tier you get to do that and i think it's really cool do you have any thoughts on the i mean i love the google meets google hangouts even though i am a pretty shy person it lets me break away from that kind of and just kind of forget. Just let me forget and hang out with people. It's like a five minute ease in. It's like when you get in water, right? Yeah. Like when you get in, it's cold and you're like, oh, no, no. What am I doing? But then once you got used to the water, you're like, this is fine. Yeah, oh, we're good. We're all hanging out. Absolutely. But with that said, bonus content is out there. If you're interested in it, check it out. But let's get back to Yellowstone. All right, Mother Chucka, I got a couple questions for you. Yeah. Um, before we get to, let's talk about Yellowstone a little. You've been there. I have. I uh, did not erupt while you were there. I don't think good. so. It's yeah. good. It's very good. Did you go to Old Faithful or did you no, just drive through? No, we just drove through. Okay. What would you do in a situation where, let's say you happen to be in Wyoming or Yellowstone. Okay. And they're like, okay, it's going to erupt in like four hours. So it's like- oh. So it's not like you're going to you're going to die. You know, it's not like immediate like right now. Yeah. But it's also not like a week where you have time to get out like, of there. Like what like in your mind or like even huh. okay, you know what? No, let's not do that cuz that's like you would leave. You would leave. Yeah. Let's say you're in Ohio right now. Okay. And they're like, "Hey, this weekend which is for us right now like 2 days away. This weekend Yellowstone is going to erupt. What are there any type of precautions you would take? Like what would you do? Uh, I don't know. It's How would hard. you handle this news? I would probably stock up on stuff, you know, water for sure, toilet paper, because that goes, that goes crazy as we found out. Well, we did find out that is the second most popular necessity behind water. Yeah. Canned food. Canned foods. What's your go-to canned food? Ravioli. <laughs> Charlie's going <laughs> to steal that Chef Boy RD. Yeah. Uh, he wants the beefaroni. I guess. I, I do like the raviolis. I don't Yeah, I guess. I don't know what else to do. But <laughs> buy more bullets. <laughs> I don't buy into the hype that this is nearing a interruption, a super eruption, and that could be because I don't want it to happen. But it seems a little arbitrary the things that people are alluding to it. And I would rather believe and buy into the idea that it happens every one not specifically Yellowstone, but one of these happens every hundred thousand years. We should have seventy five thousand years left about. And um there's been no no major concern for scientists to believe that it's going to happen soon. There's many other things that scientists are worried about. Yeah, I yeah. agree. So leaving, so is it a terrifying thing? It's yeah, just like, absolutely. And it's one of those other things, I guess, where it's like, would they tell us? Like, it's the same thing with the asteroid. It's like, like would they tell us? Yeah. The mindset where it's like, if they knew a hundred percent. It's like panic. Yeah. If they're like, well, it's going to happen. Why tell them anyways? Like, let's let them. But I feel like every government would have to be on the same page and that's just not going to, that just wouldn't happen. (laughs) No. So moving on from Yellowstone, what is like asteroid, tidal wave, um, huge faults, like earthquakes making, you know, the world caving in? Like what is your like most terrifying apocalyptic but natural thing? I'll tell you what. I was, I watched a movie called Seeking a Friend for the End of the World. 
with Steve Carell and Steve Karen Carell. Knightley. Yeah. Is it Karen Knightley? I don't remember. No, who is it? Is it Karen Knightley? I do not know. You it's can look Steve it Carell, up. though. It's Steve, it's Steve Carell. I watched that movie. It was very existential. I was not a fan of it after I watched it. And maybe it was set. And I think that really flavored my opinions on, on asteroids crashing the Earth. Did you see Don't Look Up? No. There's some really good um, depiction of of the asteroid coming. That was actually some of my favorite moments. Like, there's a moment where they're, like, laying down and they see the comet. And it looks just like the photos I saw of Neowise in 2020. Yeah. And it's like, oh, wow, that's what that, like, now that it's 2020, well, at that time, I think it was 2020 or 2021. But it's like, we have great technology and CGI. It's like, when I when there's disaster movies, it's like, this is going to be terrifying, but I can't wait to see it. Like, I can't wait to see what they do with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, to see the asteroid or the, the comet in that movie was just kind of like, I never want this to happen, but now I'm kind of getting a chance. It's like seeing a tornado. It's like, mm-hmm. if you knew you were safe, would you want to see a tornado? It's like... Yes, because it'd be amazing to see, but no, because I don't know if I'd feel safe. Where it's like in yeah. that in this instance, watching these newer movies, I get a, I get to see it. It's like when there's a car crash on the side of the road. It's like you don't want anyone to be hurt, but you can't not look. Yeah, it's like that. It's like I don't want to know what a comet hitting Earth looks like, but if you're gonna show me, although like, Armageddon's a really cool movie. Oh, there's there's older movies. I like that one. A there's lot. older movies that are you know, like the day after tomorrow. Like there's some that one's silly. Um, Geostorm. I think it came out in twenty seventeen or eighteen. That I with um, seven. oh, what's, his oh. Name? what's the guy with the the um the uh, uh the the guy um with the the Scottish accent Gerard Butler Liam Neeson oh okay. no um Gerard Butler is in Geostorm is very good uh Snowpiercer is not quite the same but it's a lot of fun yeah um I had a dream in twenty fourteen that and I might have said this on the podcast but I had a dream in twenty fourteen that an asteroid was hitting the planet. And then I woke up, and then I went back to bed, and it continued that dream. Oh. And it was like, in that dream, I had to cope with the fact that everybody I cared about was going to die. Mm-hmm. And I just remember, I was in the Neo Maffei, the my creative writing program at the time, and I remember just driving to Cleveland with my writing group. And they're like, Tyler, are you okay? I was just like, I'm depressed. <laughs> and it's like, I know there's no reason. It only lasted like four to eight hours, which is actually a long time for a dream. But like... I felt like me, real life me, coped with it and had to come to terms with it. So when I woke up and it was just like, here you are, you're a timber top, whatever. It's your 22, you know, 2014. I was just like, oh, like it literally hit me for that long. And I feel like it's just like, I don't know, like volcanoes definitely aren't my biggest fear. I think it's because of where we are. Just like tornadoes are my biggest fear because of where we are. Yeah. But um, that's, there's any great thing about Ohio. It's, we're pretty lucky when it comes to lack of natural disasters. Yeah. And we have immense water supply. That's true. So moving on to the alien things, are there any, we don't have to touch on all of them. Some of them are pretty short. Which one stood out to you the most? Or actually, is um, what? do you have any thoughts on the, the sounds over the lake? I don't know. I, 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 I guess noise distortion is the best answer. The the best scientific answer, right? Yeah. If, if Okay, if it's not like dying you know souls and stuff i don't right. know like it made me think of skyquakes a little yeah yeah especially like the harp thing but like mm-hmm. um i i like mermaids like <laughs> i don't know like i don't know what it could be i have no idea i i would guess i don't know it, it's weird it's, it's tough because you can't pinpoint the sound if like if you could pinpoint the sound like if you can't even narrow that down how can you even start to assume what could be making it like yeah that's the that's the benefit you know, to it being sound distortion, because at least that makes sense why it doesn't sound the same, because it's different noises being distorted. Yeah. That would be a crazy thing to experience while visiting Yellowstone, though. It would be. Um, aliens. Yeah. I think the photography one is my favorite. Yeah. Is, is it yours, too? Are you talking about the one where they're laying down and looking in the Milky Way? Or, or no. You t- the there one, are a couple of them with The cameras. photographer is um taking pictures. Oh, and he sees the... He just sees the blackout. Yeah. That one. I love that one. I think I like the uh, the last one just because I like stargazing. Yeah. You can put yourself in that scenario. Yeah. And it's just like the way he's describing the Milky Way. He's like, I want to punch him and I want to be there. Invite me next time. <laughs> like, I, like, I'm colorblind, so maybe I will never get to experience this. But if I'm ever in a place that's so dark and the, the night is so clear that you can see the purple-nish of the Milky Way. Yeah. That's trippy. Like, I would, I would pay quite a bit of money to guarantee that experience. And you can't really do that. 
I tried. I just went to New Mexico. Yeah. I saw a lot of stars. I saw more Milky Way at my beach vacation last year than I did in New Mexico, which is fine. I had a great time in New Mexico. You know what's crazy? A weird sensation. And I've talked to you about this a little bit. I know you're melting. I'm sorry. I'll keep this fast. Do you remember? I've talked. We've talked about how I'm afraid of kites, right? Yeah. And somehow that's related to, to heights. I'm yeah. afraid of kites because I'm afraid of heights, okay. not because they rhyme. I had this weird sensation because at first I was afraid to go outside because I and I googled like wildlife in New Mexico. I'm like, what if there's this a rattlesnake out there or a scorpion in my boot? Um, but then I got over it and I was like, I came all the way out. I came 24 hours west. I'm gonna go outside and look at this night sky. But then, so I'm standing outside and I'm looking up at this night sky, and I just had this terrified sensation of like, what if I just got like shot up? Oh, God, like you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and I don't even necessarily mean by aliens. I just mean like being exposed and I walk out, I'm, I was outside for an hour and a half last night walking around my neighborhood. Yeah. Love it. Don't, didn't think about it one Maybe time. Maybe because it was a strange place. It was foreign. I think that's fair. But I just was looking up at all these stars and I just had this sensation like what if it just, do you ever have, the, do you ever like imagine like what, like if you're out and about one day and all of a sudden gravity is just like done and you're just like. I can tell you I've never had that thought. Never? No, I'm sorry. I, you're, next time you're outside and you have nothing better to think about. I want you to think about like, what if gravity just disappeared today? Now, there's worse things that would happen. Like, I think a we probably. I don't think we happen. would survive in general. No, I, like, I, don't I think, think so. you'd probably die before you float off into space. Maybe that's an episode. One day, what happens if gravity? Technically, just, air would leave too. That's what I mean. Yeah. I think I, I don't think flying off into space is our biggest concern. But it's anyway. That that's literally neither here nor there. That is our episode on Yellowstone. <laughs> So thank you everybody so much for listening. I know this isn't uh, the huge, the normal believing the bizarre episode. I tried to, I tried to give it a little bit of a spin and a, a taste of a normal BTB episode. But I wanted to do this. I've been talking about this for like a month now, right? Yeah, you don't gotta apologize. For no, me. but I, I feel like I need to justify because every now and then we'll do an episode where the believability scale doesn't matter. It doesn't. And it, this is one this where this is one where it doesn't. Yeah, sometimes we'll just do it. And it's like it's almost silly to be like, "Well, is it believable?" Yes. Uh, yeah, it yeah. is. It's happened three times. It's going to happen eventually. Now the aliens and stuff. Like, I guess we could look at that, but that's it was so. It's neither here nor there. It's like the side dish. It's like when you've, if you've been on a multiple course dinner, which I've never paid for, thank God. But if you're ever at a multiple course dinner and you're on like course seven, and they're like, "Here's this really tasty looking dish," and you're like, "I'm not full." But that looks too good to pass up. It's like that. It's like, we didn't need the aliens. We didn't need that. But it was there. I'm going to talk about it. But if you enjoyed this episode and you've been enjoying the episodes we've been putting out and you want to let us know about it, if you're on Apple, leave us a five-star review, five stars, uh, the star stars, hit the stars five times, and let us know your thoughts, your opinions. Oh, man, that's great. I like this. I love that. And if you're on Spotify, it's even easier. Just hit the five star rating, and uh, they don't care about what you have to say. I, actually, I think Spotify is a new thing. Have you seen this? No. Um, it's like uh, hold on, let me pull it up because why not? All right, let me just go to the basement whispers real quick. What did you think of this episode? There's a Q and A now. Oh. And I have no idea what that means. And uh, do we see it? Does it get posted on there? If anybody is listening on Spotify, which we know you are, <laughs> if you're on Spotify and you're on the episode and you see that Q&A and it says, what did you think about this episode? We will give a shout out to people if we can see it. Now, I don't know if we can see it. So I apologize if we can't see it and we, you never get a shout out. But if you if you do that for us, if you see that Q&A on this episode and other episodes and you reply and we see it because I don't know what happens. We'll give you a shout out on the episode because I'm so curious about it. And uh, I think it's really cool if they're starting to incorporate more of a review system. Yeah. Not podcast based, but episode based. I think yeah. that's very interesting. It is interesting. You should do it. You should leave. Who do you listen to on Spotify? Who do you think? Let's podcast. Leave them a q and I will. Maybe that's another way to SEO optimize. I think this paranormal podcast about ghosts and other horrifying, <laughs> creepy things, paranormal <laughs> podcast, hashtag scary. Yeah. It was very good. If you do that, I'll give you two shout outs. Yeah. And if you did like this episode and you want to hear more from us, we talked about it in the middle episode, but if you want to hear more from our Patreon, that is always available. There's the adopted tier, Bizarro tier, and the dedicated tier. But it's spelled like dead. Like dead. Yeah, yeah. Dedicated. 
If you want to hear that social media response, definitely check us out because that's a lot of fun. And I hope you were intrigued by the Google Hangouts because I'd love to see you there. And there's a lot more. I mean, there's movie. We watch movies together. We give out shirts in our dedicated tier. We do bizarre news segments. We do games. We do quizzes. Lots of fun bonus stuff. There's seriously a lot of content. So if you're liking the podcast, you're all caught up and your commutes and your dog walks are getting boring. Um, There's more content out there for you. But with that said, thank you everybody so much for listening. As always, I'm Tyler. And I'm Charlie. And catch us next week on Believing the Bizarre. A podcast as bizarre as you are. <laughs>